review of the Spruce Goose uh, HK1. Um, Howard uses Hercules. Um, the kit is and Mark, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, there's not much to this kit. On the side of the box, you've got uh, the uh, history of it. It cost $18 million to build in 1947. Uh, on the other side, again, it's the same thing. Uh, front of the box, you've got a nice picture of the Spruce Goose itself. Uh, of the model, I believe this is, yes. Um, the world's largest aeroplane. Uh, one two hundred scale. The wingspan is more than 19 inches. It doesn't actually give you an exact measurement. Uh, it's got eight engines, fine detail, display stand included. Yeah, right, fine details. <laughs> There's no cockpit. So, I know that already. I've gone through this. Uh, so, what I've done is I've taken all that out of the bag and I'll make it nice and easy for the review. First part is the instructions. We've got a uh, brief history and how much it cost and what the power units are and all that sort of thing on the front. The instructions are in eight sections of the build. And uh, basically what it is, is you put all the halves together one day and then you can balance it and you can put it, put all the parts together and spray it and make it finished. The thing about this one is, um, where is it? Uh, the weight here. It says balance front end with weight. Old battery or clay before cementing the wings on. Uh, look at the instructions, it says exactly the same thing, but it does not tell you how much weight it is, it says an old battery. It's probably a C cell or sub C cell battery, uh, that would be the right balance weight for it. Um, I wish they'd given you actual weight, but then you could have, uh, we got somewhere to start for. Anyway, that's the instructions. The first part in here I, I put I left in the bag. It's the clear parts. There is one piece that's come off, but uh, they are very clear. There's a few light scratches. I can buff those out though. The cockpit here. There's, there's a piece you have to mask up. There's a few little tiny windows. Uh, but like I said, there is no. Um, there's no there's no cockpit at all in it, so if you do see through the windows, you're going to see right through the model. I think I might just have to put a, a, a very simple cockpit in there, just so you, you you can see something in there, but you won't see a lot. The first part now, actually, I'll just do these three decals. That's it. They're quite old and they feel a bit brittle brittle but they should be okay I'll probably have to get away with those um, two fuselage halves they are recessed panel lining which I'm quite you know um, quite pleased with especially the age of this particular model um, I'm not sure when this was done uh, 82 early 80s there you are uh, so for the 80s, I say this is a good model for the 80s. It's got quite a few flow marks on here. Shouldn't worry about them too much. I'm, I will have to put a good uh, coat of primer on this before doing it. I've had those come through before on other models. Uh, the wings. Hang on, I've got one that's broken off here. Let me just try this. The wings are fairly stiff, but I still think I would put uh, a piece uh, down these wings so that uh, it would take some of the weight out and some of the uh, droop out the wings, so it wouldn't, droop, so it won't droop. Remember, you've got big float, you've got big floats on here coming down, so it's got extra weight on here. So I'll put, I will put something of course here to stop the droop. Now that's an easy fix. Uh, next piece up, I've got a couple of pieces off of this. Uh, actually, that's a clear piece there, isn't it? Yeah, there's several little tiny pieces in here that are 
that will come off. Um, I've got one propeller shot broken. Oh dear. Well, we can put that, that's an easy fix. And one float that's off, is it both? I don't know whether they're the same. Yeah, it looks like they're the opposite ones. Uh, not too much weight to that. And uh, should go together quite nicely. Again, we set panel lining on these. Same with the tail planes. Again, we set panel lining. Nice little kit. Um, detailed engines. Let me just put my glasses on. Okay, my sprues are rubbish. No, they're just plain rings in the engines. There's no engine detail in there as such, but you probably wouldn't see it really. <coughs> it's, there's a bit of flash on some of the parts down here, but not, not too bad. So, all in all, quite a nice little model. Very simple to do. Shouldn't take me too long. I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. I keep saying that. I shouldn't do, really. So, that is a review of the Spruce Goose. Hopefully, I haven't gone on too long about this. It's, there's not much, there really isn't much to it. This is going to be a, a walk through build. Actually, it's going to be rather faster than that. It's going to be a very fast walking. Um, actually, in fact, it's going to be a runny. <laughs> um, the most problem I'm going to have is actually um, filling and getting the silver done uh, on this. Because uh, you know what silver's like. It shows up every little tiny mark on it. Uh, so it really is a filler job on this basic thing. Um, okay, that's the review of the Spruce Goose for the Flying Boat Group build. I'm going to get on with the modelling right now and I'll be back in a couple of seconds. What I've done today is I glued the two wings together, drilled a hole through them, made sure, making sure that the the joint line here, is, is, I've got a raised joint line here which I could take off and it should be a nice joint line down there for the uh, uh, for the finish. And uh, I drilled a hole through here. I put a piece of aluminium through here. Now this is actually a old knitting needle that I chopped the end off and placed it in here and conformed it so it uh, so you got the uh, dihedral on there as well. I super glued it in. I wasn't happy with it. Um, super glued. It probably would hold. But what I, what I decided to do was to use some aldite uh, and stuck it down in two places here and here and put some tape over it to hold it in place. Uh, that won't move at all and it'll keep the dihedral, it won't, the wings won't droop or anything hopefully. So uh, that's that bit. Um, oh, if anybody does a, a C-130, the old Airfix one, they had a habit of the wings drooping and breaking the back. That method there, even if you just put a couple of small ones on the inside of the fuselage across the joint, that will never happen. Now just a little tip there for you. Um, other things I've got done is I've got the, uh, the tail planes done. I've cut a notch out of one of them and I've also cut a notch out of, not that one, that's the other one, excuse me, let me just pull that. And this one, they're the planes that go, they're the pieces that go on that side of the plane. The other ones I haven't touched, I left them blank so I know which ones are which. Um, the hole here was very tight, I couldn't even get this in. Um, I had to open it up slightly and it now fits, um, feels pretty good in there actually. Um, it's it it doesn't move in there but it's not absolutely tight so that'll be ideal to glue in afterwards on that wing and the other wing I've done and I've lost one where have I lost one uh I lost the tailplane 
How can I lose a tailplane? Oh, I haven't lost it. I'll put it on here. This one is a very tight fit in here. I haven't done anything to the slot, but I can push it. Oh, I did almost going to push it in here. There, there it goes. It almost clips in like a clip together kit. And it's nice and tight, it's square. So I don't need to do anything with that at all, apart from put a bit of glue in there before I put the two halves of the fuselage together. If I try and put that in with a, when I've done the fuselage, I'll crack it. So I'll do it before, uh, glue it, and then put the two halves together. It'll make it that much stronger joint as well in that particular part. The other bit, in here, I'll, I'll use the other one because it's. Uh, I'm just going to take these off. I put these on earlier today. I got some. Ah, oh, where is it? I've got some square rod here. Okay, I've put a square rod along here, and the same on the other side. Um, this is for the the new floor to go in. What I did was I used I used a piece of cardboard, cut down to shape, fitted it in there, made sure it fits okay. And then I used that as a template to cut out a plastic floor to go in here. Now I know where the floor is, where it starts and finishes. I can uh, do the cockpit now. And you will see it in there actually. There's quite a bit of glazing around the front edge of this. So you will see the front of it. But I've got the whole um, lot of pictures for the cabin. I'll put them up here as you've been... As you can see, uh, I'm gonna do, that's the next piece to do. I'm going to do all the uh, internal cabin structure on this. That's it for the uh, flying boat uh, for the moment. Uh, I hope to get some done on it tomorrow, but I've got to, uh, I've really got to jump down on my allotment and uh, just have a little bit of a tidy up there. And I won't fancy doing anything when I get back. So, for now, I'll uh, see you very shortly. Hope you enjoyed the review of this and the start of the build. So, for me, it's good night. For me, it's good night. See you all soon. Bye for now.